when we're on today's guest we've got a lovely Kyle Faulkner how are we brother? good man Thanks. first of all mate thanks for coming on the show Never I man. appreciate it mate I know you're a busy man and second of all congratulations on the album get released like I say mate there's no questions mate we just kind of fucking roll with it talk about go back for the past the, where you were, grew up born how it all started Um, I was born in Dundee Nine Wells Hospital um, 1987 uh, 6 and 6, 87, cracking day. Um, day of life. Yeah. Um, went to scale, played football, um, snooker, that was my thing, and then got a guitar. Got done in, went to, got done in. Joke um, age? About 13. I always used to get done in, but I got really done in one time with golf clubs a lot, and then after that, my, my, my brother in law bought us a guitar and says, like, you need to kind of stop going out for a bit, and, and that's kind of. That no, became when I became obsessed with it. And the Beatles, the Beatles and getting done in changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny. Of the Beatles. Yeah, uh, that's that was my thing. It's funny because you hear it for a lot of people. You always get, oh, I got done in too. That's what changed my life. And it's like I really did though. Like, um, and then we were, we were kind of the band. I think everyone in St John's high school was obsessed with. The, it was either they were into the Stone Roses, the Beatles, or the Oasis. But it was like kind of all three. Um, and then we just started covering them songs in a band, and then. Mm -hmm. We started beating the Irish dancers, which was a big thing, because the Irish dancers used to win the talent show every year, and we mm -hmm. kind of won. And with that 30 quid, you used to win. We'd, we'd, we'd be a carrot. Like, <laughs> and you go, you've got to give it to charity. What's the point of getting a competition if you can't spend it on a carrot? <laughs> well, you're 14 years old. Bottles are wine. So that's um, where it started, 13 then. Was it gang fighting? Yeah, um, yeah the, the, the loads of, there was always gangs in Dundee, but it was just like chasing each other. But right, you just so chase, you never get caught. Yeah, but the one time I did get caught, it was like, oh shit. It was yeah. like, Oh no, just chasing and eventually that was turned around. My voice went, I was like, shit. Shite bags ran away, they can fucking help you. So uh, there's loads of debates of who ran back that day. Eh? It's still at this day when you're in a swallow in the party, it's like, I came back for you now, you know what? <laughs> you left me for dead. <laughs> so that's when it started, 13, but that's classic Dundee, mate, because I was a bit wary coming here the day you says, mate, he's in Dundee, is that? Oh, shit. Yeah. Did we start bringing the nice and guns with us? <laughs> anyway, we've got this beautiful place. The place is, it's spot on, man. Lovely. This yeah, well, is your local then, man. Well, this, is, this used to be called the Dog House. Um, but, uh, so we. When we first became, like, a, a, we used to play in a place called the Bayview because my cousin rent, uh, had a pub, so he just gave it for, for nothing. It was, so that's where we got our name, the Bayview. But then it, was, it wasn't a very good, like, we had to sort of get out of there. Um, I think we were, we were drinking too much and we were like, I ended up drinking the bar dry one time and it was like, we had, we had debt and stuff. So we came here and we, we painted the whole top floor for Sarah, who used to run it. And she was like, right, you could just rehearse for free. But then once we got it all looking nice, we had that wee Super Nintendo and we were living off a uh, super noodles for a little across the road. And we used to just like share them and just like, hey, I've got a kettle. And we never left the place. Kenny would stay overnight and just pretend we were leaving because we had a key and we would just stay, stay there overnight. Mm -hmm. Hey, metal parties. And then once, once like other bands knew that it was a cool bit, they were like, when we were, when we first got signed, we stopped touring and the other bands were coming in and they kind of ruined it, took over and it was like, People were getting charged to go up there, and I was like, "What's happened to our room? Where's our gear? Where's my Super Mario Brothers?" <laughs> I mean, it was all gone. But, uh, so, uh, so that's but, what I started in Dundee, the band. What age? Yeah. Did um, you get well, we, we, well, we started the band when we were fourteen, and then we done covers, and then we kind of split up because I can't remember. What people were getting apprentices and stuff, and apprenticeships, and everybody was getting into different stuff, and then we went away, and then we kept, it was my my dad's funeral. And we were kind of the first time I'd seen the boys in ages, and we were like kind of pissed up. We were about 16, like, want to get a band together again. It was like, right, okay, we'll definitely do it because my, my cousin's got a pub. Mm -hmm. So we done it, and then <clears throat> after that, like, Kieran was writing songs, and I was writing, we would both been writing for a while, but we were like, oh, these are actually pretty good once we got together and done them. Mm -hmm. But that's how I kind of started there. Yeah. So the boys, you were in the band of Huey, you start a brotherhood, you just grew up with these boys, they yeah. were in school. Um, yeah, prim like, nursery, primary, high school. They were all a year above me in school. Mm -hmm. um, and then, no, it just kind of, we just always been there, so it's... When did you realise, fuck me, we've got something here, we're, we're, we're brilliant, we're decent here? Um, I'm not sure, like, maybe if it, I think it was when my, my brother-in-law came down the stair room rehearsing, we had, like, four songs, it was, like, Claudia coming down, a superstar tradesman and someone else, and, and he came down, and, and my brother-in-law was like, wow, that's really good, and he was somebody I always respected, because he played guitar and stuff, mm -hmm. and he kind of taught me a couple of things, and I was like, Oh wow, it must be good. And then we went up the stairs because we were still doing covers, but we had like four of our own songs, and people were going mental. Because I used to play on my own up above the, in, in the Bayview, and I used to play like Gary Barlow covers and that, and it's just like any of the, the, the females shout it out, like, Gary! And I'd be like, Never, ah, yeah, now it's time. And I broke out of our tarts, and I'd be like, Oh, this is no bad, I'm paid for this, okay? So I had my NPA system, and I was like, What? And I was becoming a wee bit of a thing, so I was like, 
come on, the next time I'm playing, I'm going to actually bring my band. They were like, boo. And I was like, nah, they're good, honestly. <laughs> yeah. And they get they got a battle the night, I mean, mm. but it was good. But after that, then it was like, I remember, remember Kieran was like, oh, this my mate's band called the Color Angels. But we were like, what, actual band? Because this was a pub. Mm -hmm. This is like a venue. Well, it was a venue. Well, it still is, but it's not. it used to be a major venue. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, well, the Color Angels are playing. And it was like, come in, oh, we're getting to play with them. And I went, what, a real gig? Well, I was shiting myself. <laughs> I'd be running about, like, getting shots of jackets. And I'm, what am I going to wear? And I'm <laughs> like, oh, you've got to carry it. And I'm, oh, my God, freaking out. And we only played four songs, but I remember my sister videoed it. And it was like, I remember that was the first ever gig in here. So it must have been, I was 17. And they must have been 18. So, and then we got signed like a year after that. So we'd just been then, used to, we'd done this thing called the World Tour of Dundee. And we played other, other, the worst pubs in Dundee. Right, and what was the worst like, pubs? Well, no worse, but the, the, the roughest. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like to us, that was like where we're drunk. You know what I mean? But now, like, they're all shut down and stuff. But that was like mental. Like, we played like, uh, played the rock, the rock in Venus Hill, which was mental. It was like, oh, people were sniffing gear on, <laughs> on the stage, you know, and just like, go away. And people just going up and like, that was mental. It was Do like, you remember any of that? I can't really remember back in the day because that was, I Your mean, wild days. that was like, that, this was like dead early on, but there was a lot going on then. I mean, even when we got signed and stuff, we didn't realise how big a deal it was because we're man, we were kind of always uh, treated like kids up until about now. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, right, so honestly, like, but it was always like, oh, here, how much are we getting paid for that gig? You'd be like, ah, oh, what, what do you want to know that for? And so we were always a bit, <laughs> wee bit stupefied with that thing. We just thought oh, it was getting done for, you know I mean, we've had about 12 different managers. So it's like, it's no good thing. You speak to other bands that do well, it's like, it's because they've had decent management. So we finally, guidance. yeah, I think, I, I think I've like, so now, I've got good guidance now. I'm in a good, I'm in a good position, but I think like, just for ages, we weren't interested, you know what I mean? We were, we were into getting smashed and playing the gigs. Even the gigs got in the way, do you know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. like, it was just a big, a big pirate bus, just, a big party. just like, going every big place. Yeah. Yeah, it was <laughs> mental, yeah. I, I wish I'd have teamed up here then, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crazy days, yeah. But teeing the partner that as well, that must have been a buzz for you. That must have been. When did you realise, right, I, I'm, I'm making it here, I'm, I'm really doing something in my life, did it scare the shit out of you? No, I, I don't think i ever done that. We, we were, we, we were a bit, uh, we were dead cocky, and you know, like, it was like, I think like when, I mean, it was small things, Kevin, for us, because you're heroes and stuff, I remember like, we played with O'Galker in the Royal Albert Hall and it was just even going about, it was like, shit, no one's kicking about in that, Ken, it was like, that was your hero, Ken, so that was a big deal, Ken, but like, we but headline glass to brain on, it was just like, whatever, Ken, we were playing at gigs, played three gigs that day and it was like, it was, Ken, we had just come back from New Zealand and it was like, there's loads of stuff, Ken, we played glass to brain like six times now or something, it's like, but, but back in the day, now it's like, oh shit, we want a headline. Yeah, but it's like, when we were headlining, we were just like, right, man, let's go, let's go and get it. Yeah, well, take it I mean, on that, when I played on that, that Glastonbury stage, I mean, somebody showed me a, a, a YouTube party, Ken, I was at a party like about a year ago. Somebody, have you seen Glastonbury? You're off your nut. I went, I can't mind that. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I them pellets, get me, some of them swedgers. <laughs> like, it's like nine o'clock at night at Glastonbury, I went, why would I do that? Like, uh -huh. I wouldn't dream of doing that now. Like, uh -huh. Can I'm like, 100,000 people? Oh, it's, I mean, it was mental. Were you yeah, on the Call of I, I, I can't even remember, like, actually playing the gig, but I remember just going, I was, I was going really fast. It was like, yes, yes, it was fast, good. <laughs> right, no, on a bad way. <laughs> yeah. At least you got the job done, got the job done, and boom, 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 boom. Okay. But that's just, like I say, that's a lot of blood, but no, you have, you have matured. You've been to a rehab three times. Yep. How's that? How have you found all that? Um, it's good, uh, uh, rehab's good for anybody, can anybody, it's, if you've even if you know got a problem, it's still good, that it's like you'll find a problem, <laughs> I mean, no, I'm saying that that's how you should go, but, I mean, the first couple of times I went, it was kind of, it was kind of, you going, you going, I was like, no, I stopped nudging, it's kind of, no, I don't want to go, like, I think you should go, you should go, so the first time, I was just like, yeah, like, it'll be good, kind of, it's Thailand, but, no, I've been to Thailand that many times now, it's like, it's no, it's like, I love, love the place, but, like, this was like, you're going to jail, the first couple of times, but the third time I went, I was like, kind of, wasn't it? I wasn't that serious. I was just looking to get a pal, and there was this Glaswegian boy, James. He was uh, like, his name's James as well, but he was like, he was oh, like, guys. he was like, really sound. He, can you meet all these people that have got serious issues, serious, serious issues? And I was like, wait, I'm just talking to piss here. I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And by the third time it had happened, I was like, wait, well, maybe I do belong here, can And I remember like my, the people in the rehab were saying, like, see, after a month, if you do a month and you're getting on good, you can go to the studio. And it was always like, I was like, yes, okay, I'll just I'll pretend I'm really good. And I'll run about, and I'll run every day, and I'll, I'll speak polite, and I'll, I'll listen to people's stories, and I'll, I'll share, and all this. And then the month came, and I was like, whoop, whoop, got kind of like Christmas Day, right? Like, yes, I went to a big social meeting, like, no, everyone doesn't, you're not ready to go. I went, what? And they kept them for another two months, and I was like, boom, boom, like, pure. Honestly, that was me, like, pure, cuff me up, take me away. Christmas? Three months, yeah, uh, fucking. No, it wasn't at Christmas, it was, but it felt like Christmas Day for me, like, uh -huh. when it happened, like, uh -huh. like, because I was, 
it was like it was Christmas Day was taken away from me. I was uh, like, what can uh, like so. Uh, but the first thing, like I say, admitting you've got problems is a fucking, it's so scary, whether it's drink, oh. drugs, shagging, gambling, yeah. anger, it's scary because you go, you don't want, you, we think we're alright, I used to go to my gambling meetings and I used to look about and go, I'm not as bad as fucking him, I'm not as bad as him, but sure as fuck, a week later I'm back gambling, putting right. away and stuff, fucking lying, all the bullshit of the day and then you go, wait a minute, have I got a problem? Because yeah. we all look at people and we think, I'm not as bad as fucking him, everybody else, but it's all, for us, but now you're only straight and narrow, man. You've released your new album, everything's gone good in it. You've got uh, a new baby daughter, one and a half. Yeah, she's one and a half, yeah, wild. She's, she's good. Um, seeing them things, I always think, oh, hearing a bairn must be mental because I've been my pals have said it, but it's, it's quite, I've taken it in my stride, you know what I mean? It's no like, I don't think like shit, can it's like, I, I really enjoy it, can it's like, somebody, why, why was I? I was in, I was in the hot, I went to pick up something for my sister today, and she, she's a nurse. I can't remember what it was, but I went into to the hospital. I can't remember what I was in for, but I was, uh, she was just like, pick up this bag, and I went in, and the, the wife was like, oh, and she went, oh, so how, how are you getting on with the daughter? And I went, oh, it's absolutely dead. And she went, so it's okay, is that good? I went, I never fucking say it's okay. I said, it's amazing. And I was like, don't go spread and stuff. And I said, it's okay. I said, I haven't lost my daughter. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah, that's interesting. It's fucking hard. You die yeah. to play Glastonbury any day, <laughs> ball up naked for the edges, and sit and watch the way. That's how hard that is. It is, it's difficult. Especially, but do you think that's one of the reasons you changed as well and said, right, fuck it, I'm going to rehab and I'm going to a real bash? Um, I don't know, I think, like, because when we were in rehab, like, you're not know, meant to, there's no shagging away in rehabs, but <laughs> that was where <laughs> she was, that, that, that was where, that, where Bairn was conceived in the rehab, so. <laughs> <laughs> so but we were actually trends, I thought, like, I'll oh, just do it, and then it was like, I mean, I'd honestly, man, I says, look, I've got this dart, and I was like, going to be pacing the room. This was like when I was just kind of coming to myself. Uh -huh. Been in for like a sort of three weeks, maybe a month, and I'm just like couldn't really sit down and vomiting every day, and I'm really no good. I'm in a bad place, and I'm still like, I'm just like fidgety, and I'm no real listening, and I'm no happy. I'm there, and I'm right up, and I'm like, okay, I'm at a day, and I says, look, I'm sorry, and I'm with friend, and he says, look, if this dart goes in this board first time, can't see any of them stories here, but it's true as fuck. I mean, if this goes in here, I'm at, uh, if this hits the bullseye, water's pregnant, now it's hitting a life changer, and honestly, and I swear to God that I was pure, I'm no bad at that, to be honest, yeah. but I was like, pure, pff, can, can, no, none of the shaky handshake kings right. have been after baby for a while, again, pure, but, right, and I went, yeah, so the next day, I didn't even ask her if she was pregnant, I knew she was pregnant, I was like, she went, guess what, I went, I can, <laughs> so I was like, oh, she's pregnant, so like, that, that was when I kind of changed after that, and then, the I don't know, but there's there been a couple of, like, kind of couple of flip-ups, because that he does, but it's like, no, like, Feel on, do you know what I mean? It's like I, I get my, I told myself back in line, do you know what right. I mean? It's like there's it's no running two, three years and four yeah. years, it's a couple yeah, of weeks like, then. Yeah, because I used to go on benders for like weeks on end, and I was like, and then it was like I always thought that I never had any pals, but then my pals that were we as I wasn't kind of what I meant. I mean, I was I was at a barbecue the other day with any of my good pals, and he was like, he was like, here, just oh, just no being funny, but you did. You, there was a bit of three, four years you were a dick. <laughs> A fucking arsehole. Right. And I was like, I was like, what? When was I that? Do you went, mate? Loads of people say that. It was not just me. He says, but I'm your good pal. That's what I tell you. He says, but I just no. I'm saying you're sound as fuck now, though. I was like, but I was just ah them years. I was thinking I was sound. And he was going, nah, you're yeah. a dick. And I was like, shit. Can because I like, you've kind of the mentality in your head. You think, oh, oh Abdi loves me. I'm sound. Can yeah. I mean, I'm the funny guy. I, but okay. you're no, you're a guy that falls asleep with aye, a, aye. and like marks a cunt in yourself. Do you know what I mean? Aye, so, you're shaving somebody's eyebrows off. Yeah. <laughs> but the loudest man in the room is the weakest as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm to, it's a shield in it. I was always a loud daft guy, I was always for there because it's a mask, you want everybody to think he's fucking, he's a great guy, he loves himself and he knows how to have a good time but they never seen me in the house fucking depressed, suicidal, yeah. do you know what I mean, hate life, yeah. and they don't really see that side of you but at a party you've got the dick out and you're tapping the <laughs> tables man, you're line after line and you're loving life and you think you're big, but all the, all the gear that I was taking, I was fucking balls, I had all sorts of debt. The way, and I was gambling, so mm. I just all end up one vicious circle. But you end up surrounding yourself with people who party as well because it doesn't feel as bad then. But deep yeah. inside, you kind of know it's fucking wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What kind of stuff were you taking? Just with Charlie? Ah, 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 no. Like, it was ma mainly, mainly Charlie, yeah, but like, ah, I mean, back in the day, everything was everything. Was everything you know what I mean? Like, you took anything, but. Did you get it from Eh, Like, back in the day, yeah, but like, but like, there used to just be like, we just, just in things, you just, it was a collective buy, you know what I mean? Like, let's go, we're going on tour, let's bank, you know what I mean? But, I mean, you know, there's stuff that I didn't, I didn't like to admit to some of the stuff I'd done, but like, I mean, I didn't, uh, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a good, you know what I mean? There's a lot, of, a lot of people that even were, back in the day, were kind of dabbling are now gone, you know what I mean? Indeed. Yeah, like, yeah. fucking loads of people, so it's like, I, it's kind of, I got, a, I got a wee flag for you, but, 
kind of wouldn't really touch even there's after when I was still on the channel I wouldn't stuff touch any other stuff it's like it's the well dodgy but there's it's only a, hand, a handful of people that get t took a while at it, and it's like, fuck that. Man. It's a slippery slope, but it, is. it starts off maybe people smoking joints and all, or whatever, and then it goes to, you know yourself, goes to smack or crack, whatever. Yeah. It's a slippery slope, man, because we're constantly searching. As human beings, we search for stuff, we search. How did I feel good? For me, it was I was searching for all the rank stuff, mm. because every time I was doing it, it was just to make me feel a hundred times worse. Do you know what I mean? Do you feel as if your career, because your career, did it hit a speed bump? Any, it hit a speed bump after... If you went long, did you stop um, as well? Two for um, a year? Nah, well, I mean, well, we're always playing. It's just like, I think the longest we've ever took out is like a year, maybe two maybe mm. two years. But I mean, we've done like a, like a seven year set list thing where it was, it was like we're maybe doing a new album and then we finally got a visa for America. So we're like, well, let's we could tour America. So let's just go and do a compilation album and do a couple of songs. And then we went to America and I was like, I was, we went for three months with, on the bus and then we'd got our money cut. Something happened, but we got like the tour manager was like, there's no money left, so we got ten dollars each a day, which is like fuck sweet. Okay, nine, right? And right, it was right. like I mean there was a couple of the sold sold out shows were like in, in New York, like like LA, San Francisco, which was which was good, but then you because we had to do such an extensive tour, it was like we were going in and out of these wee nook and crannies that we'd never even heard of them before. Okay, and these places were just to try and like cover the cost and it was like I wasn't I wasn't making any money and then it was like fuck and then and, like but at that time I was just I was bang, bang on the bevy, nobody was speaking to us. For three months on the tour bus, I just got locked away in this wee bit, just sitting with a big massive telly on the tour bus. Used to go, <laughs> it would move out, get into the street. I used to sit in there fucking drinking my Bud Lights as much as, as much as I can get out. Like, and then a couple of gigs, I would just go on, sing one song, and go, fuck it, there's nobody here, I'm off. And then, and they was like, yeah, but look, we're not sitting here, like, you can't just leave the show. And I was like, one time I was in, was in, uh, in Detroit, and I was like, oh, I fucking love Eminem. Eminem was in my big influences when I was younger. Kind of like, what a cleaner. And I was like, I loved them, I loved these first couple of albums. And then, I was in Detroit and I was like, oh, I just I had a couple of the kills in the morning. Like, oh, whatever. I'm fucking next to like, you mind your plane tonight? I went, no, my plan is to get really drunk, go to sleep, and I'll wake up and play the show. Mm -hmm. And then I never obviously went to sleep, went and scored, and then fucking pure next went up, pure, whoa, like they're pure. So, one of the talking the hill tour, and it was like, even then, I was like, man, just trying to get a wee pal. They're like, no, nah, because your pal wants to go get wrecked. And I was like, well, at least come to the pubs or something like that. So, I mean, now and again, I'd like hearing them. Peter now would be, oh, I'm on, can do something, but they were a while like, and they'd be a while like, going to see the Washington DC buildings and on, and, and, and I was just crumbled up in bed, I mean, and I'd get up at night and go out and just fucking go to strip bars and on, it was just mental. <laughs> were you the hardcore man in the band? Well, I've, I've been hardcore, like, like, that would be going to be pretty hardcore, do you know what I mean? It's like everyone goes through phases, even if you want to stay off it for a bit, mm -hmm. and you're like, even a tour, and if you're like, no, nah, I've heard it too hard, I'm going to stay off it for a few days, rejuvenate, can get out of that, and then somebody's like, ah! Pete's just right. being in the match, he's like, a fucking sell, I've just won. Mm -hmm. Fucking rap, right. It's a bit different when you're annoying me, though, isn't it? You're like, no, no, was that what I was doing last night? And then it's just a big rotation, it's so there's never... circle, then, if nobody's ever sober, to say, right, lads, man, we've got something here to take over the fucking world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If one's getting mad with it, then if you're trying to stay clean for a week, but then somebody else is getting mad with it, then the five people you surround yourself with is the five people you become. Yeah. So the people you surround yourself with, you become them as well. So it's hard for you to get away or change unless everybody came to an agreement. Because you wouldn't have changed unless everybody have changed. Because you, if you were sober in that bus, everybody would have done your fucking nothing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It would have drove you to drink. Uh, it's, it's hard there. It's, I don't think, like, fuck knows. It's always someone, is it? Nobody's ever, nobody's ever going to be fully happy. But I think, like, we, we, do, we do good, Ken. Like, we've we non stop touring. We've, mm -hmm. we've done it more than anybody I, I know. Like, poor Ken, like, I'll probably get a few things saying, fuck you, I've toured near near, but I doubt it. Like, poor Lord Ken. Yeah, we're non-stop there. Like, <laughs> but uh, and even when there's time off, we're in the studio, or we're doing something. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, um, cause like there's has been a few, there's ups and downs. We've been like bang, and then next minute you're back in Spain, and then next minute you're like, yes, that's good. And then but you come back to the UK, and you're like playing fucking Bristol. Uh, but then it's about Bristol's class. But one minute you're in the academy, and next minute you're playing tech, or next minute you're up to the academy again. So it's always up and down for us. It depends. You get what I mean? It's no like yes, we've got that hit song. It just depends on. So how again, is that had... then? How is that? How do you see it's in life, man? It's easy to make it, but it's hard to maintain. So what happens is some people get a certain stage and go, I'm not saying news, but we've made it. If you think you've made it and you've already took te two steps back, it's all about the progression. Getting to a level saying, fuck it, man, how do I go bigger again? Or keep raising the bar and keep going, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so what do you uh, think? Do you think you've never had any like, proper guidance at all? Somebody to take us under a wing and go. There's definitely never been any guidance. And I think we were, because of the whole thing, like thinking we're pirates and fucking trying to. We thought we were in, in, invincible, you know what I mean? So, and I still do. Like, I think like we've got a fan base, right? Which is like, which is good for anybody. You know what I mean, even if we go any place, there's always going to be people there. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes it might be, can we play it up the 
Shetland or something. There was like, and it's half full, but you're still like, come on, it's still Shetlands. Does anybody come here? Come on, so it's like, but I mean, like, that is good. But, but that's the thing. You're like, come on, Shetland is class. Can you think uh, we've been there a few times now, and it's brilliant. Can we went to Orkney recently, and it was like, we thought anybody was going to be here, but it was brilliant. Can we stay there for a couple of days, and it was like, even the, the iron just tastes different. You're like, oh, this is cool, mm-hmm. but like. I mean, and then again, it's kind of good to keep showing your toes that you've got to keep working. Like, and as and I think as as well as a band like the View, like we've we've come, we've been through fucking shit. You know what I mean, like together as a band, and we've all had really serious fights, like right. like rap in the past, right. like bang bang, like no just you're being a dick can stop it. It's like fucking had that, like <laughs> we're, like and like, fucking iron, like fucking shut the door, lock them in, like, <laughs> like chaos, like smashing guitars each other's head in a mental, Ken, But like so, and we're still pals. You can I mean, it's no like. Can it's like there's been a few times like I've just be I just done I think I could face the boys and I oh my god what have I done what have I done and can I've got it's good, it takes Renny to come in and go right here's the lowdown right it's what you were doing you were like Abby was playing FIFA you came in and tried to stick a head on somebody it was pretty bad it was oh shit uh, I was going to accept my apology you know and I'm like shit the other can Abby's kind of left like you're you're on your in here right and I was like oh, what could you maybe tell them and like nah you need to go and sort it like but Abby's done it like no just me everyone's done it do you know what I mean had to apologize I think Pete's the only one that's no done it like. So he's alright, but um, but Abdi's kind of done it. So, but I just edit it more than often. Do you know what I mean? But no one anymore because I think I think if somebody was to do that now, it would just be what you playing it. Yeah, I mean, that's out of order. Band, yeah, I mean, but back in the day, it just it was a regular thing. Everyone would do it, and it would just follow it. And but there was more good times and always good times. Do you know what I mean, like, but, but it's, kind of, it's just because there's after shows as well. Yeah, it's yeah. no just like the, it's, the, it's the after show, the after show on, and yeah, you yeah. just kind of you're like, ah, oh, just yeah. learn to say no. Yeah. It's about changing, going not working off because. You've still got your full life ahead of you, man. You can still achieve whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. You've just released a new solo album. The name of the solo album you're saying is Liam Gallagher picked the name of that, I heard. Yeah, uh, he did, yeah. Uh, we were just, we were just on, we were, uh, me and my last were in Thailand for a few months. And Liam and Debbie were over there. We've been pals for years, so they were they were like, oh, just come out, come out of the hotel. It's like this big swamp kind of thing. So we just went out and had a shindig for a few days. And I was like, oh, I fucking... I, can like listen to the album. It's normally just a, a, a music listening competition. If you see what I could, mm-hmm. oh, I can that better new and that's that's what it becomes. And then it was like, oh, and he says, oh no, thank you. And I was like, oh fuck, that's cool, man. And I says, because it's what it's a lyric in my song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he said, if you didn't use it, I'll use it. And I was like, oh, bastard, Ken. So mm-hmm. I was thinking, oh, I didn't want it to pick up myself. It's it's kind of my first solo album. But I thought, nah, you could tell it, can't we? But it's, I mean, I had those loads of stuff. I don't know what what was my what I had to call it, almost pleasant. <laughs> I mean, almost pleasant. <laughs> Some you smell like shite in the air and you go, is that us all the time? I like that, but I'm not sure. It's like hops, kind of like hops. You didn't care it was good. I can it's creating beer, but, and I can I like beer, but is it, is it pleasant? It's almost pleasant. Right there. Right there. Boom. Yeah. How long have you been pals with Liam? Um, I don't know, like, I met him, met, we, we all met him at the uh, Liverpool, Liverpool Echo Arena, uh, but 10, 2008 it was, so 10 oh, years ago. Yeah. First time we got access to all these passes, can we be, because we were, we were, I can't mind how we'd, how we'd met, but we just got invited to come back and it was like, whoa, come on, Wade's world, yeah. like, we're going <laughs> to meet the places. It was like, fucking hell. It that's was amazing, so, yeah. Yeah. Mate, that's some achievement. Do you ever look back and as well and go, fuck me, man, I've done all right for myself? Or do you look back with a bit of regret as well? Nah, it's, sometimes you look back with regret, but going to rehab and that, they teach you no, have, have no regrets. Can I, I regret nothing. They say, jump off a cliff, get away. <laughs> But, uh, nah, I've not really got any regret. Sometimes I wish, like, like, in the past couple of years, I used to, I just piss my money up the work. I mean, but I'm no, I'm, I'm always going to be like that. That's the way I am. Aye, aye, aye. Unless you find a, like, a woman that doesn't do that. But me and my last together piss money up the work, like, aye. together, just put, put it in, piss it up. No, no, put it in, but just like, but, aye, aye, aye. but like, so now, I just think, like, even getting a mortgage, like, driving license, a uh, driving license. Congratulations. And, uh, no, got, just, uh, just doing that, you get I mean? It's uh-huh. stuff that other band done years ago. Aye, <laughs> aye, I mean, like, aye, aye. and I'm just clicking on now. Just I mean? a bit so, of growing up, and that's just yeah. a bit of responsibility. But like I say, the past is the past, it's fucking done. You can yeah, look back and right. go, I could have done this and done that. But like I say, it's all about preparing for the present moment and trying to enjoy the rest of the future. So, what's the next steps for you then? Since the album's released, how does the band feel about that and all? Um, they're, they're supportive, I mean, it's, it's a strange one because it's no, well, it's no just like I'm saying, right, you just wait, I might do a solo album. Yeah. So everyone's doing stuff. I mean, Kieran's producing uh, stuff. Uh, Pete's, Pete's work at Pete's touring with. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's happening yet, but he's meant to be touring with a big Liverpool band. But I don't want to mention it in case I fucking forget, get him his job fucked up. <laughs> I but, just uh, see it. Uh, <laughs> get him on the streets. <laughs> um, uh, so I've these, I've these doing stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like it's good. It's, it's good to have a bit of time off because even when we do have time off, it's not really time off. But this is actually 
like just time apart. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I, I think we should spend some time apart. <laughs> what a marriage breakup, isn't it? Yeah, did you, were you nervous at telling them about the album, or did, was that like no, no, or? like the last time when I was in rehab, the last time you had to do this thing where you can you got to make your. Uh, I mean, you got to apologise to everybody. Ah, yeah, 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 it's yeah. fucking it's hard work. I did it to people that have threatened, and but I was like, shit, did I even do that? And it's like, I'm a manager, old manager, and I had to go and speak to the man. Like, and I was like, but they're arseholes, and it doesn't matter. You've mm. got to apologise to them. And I'm like, oh, right, okay. So I done that, and then it was it was quite hard hearing that for like one of my ex managers, and then he was like, like explained to what, how, how I was being. I was like, shit. So I was like, a really hard. Can I mean? But then you're in this sort of group thing, and I had to date to the band, and I was like, well, kind of point, and I'm a nieces, and I'm. A, you know that I've, you know that I've offended everyone personally, but you just do it. You just make amends. Not my whole family. So I thought I'm not just going to do a collective thing and have a group chat. I'll do them all one by one. Uh, write them a letter. Balls, but yeah, I did that. And even some of my family were like, "What are you doing this for?" And I'm like, "Wait, just accept it." You know, uh, you know? Just let me go. Yeah. Just accept it. Let yeah. me go. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Okay, you're not going to be getting these letters every day. Just mm. like accept that one in a million. Mm. And I'm not going to do it again. So. Well, that's kind of closure for you to move on to the next level. Yeah, like I done it to the band, and they were like, "It's cool, Ken." Then I don't worry about it. Right, we can't. You're going through a hard time, and can you one of yourself? And I was like, "What for that one? You split up with?" I mean, it's like quite bad. So. Were you that bad? Uh, so I've been told, yeah. <laughs> so you remember? Um, what was the trigger point for you, but to spiral it all out and just go fuck it? Was there a point? There was none. I just, I just thought there was no limits. I just didn't. Know. I just thought I was. That's. I, I can't. I just always in, always in jail, and just like I thought, how did I get here? And just like fucking, just constantly in trouble. And it's like, but I'm no, I'm no an arsehole. So it was like, I, I think like it's, I, I mean, I could blame it on anything, but I was always like when I'm out, I'm just sort of somebody always says something. I mean, somebody come at me in Glasgow and went. But yeah, fuck, yeah, I was I, I was told that you fucking uh, you, you you were hitting your bird or something. I was like, what the fuck are you on about? And he went, fuck, you can dig 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 this. It was in the box or something in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the fuck did I just get digged there for? And so I'm like, fuck, next kind of kind of like pure whatever. Can but I've got normally got a wee bit of fucking heavy heavier around with can't uh, I mean, nowadays. Yeah, just in case. But like I used to, we used to like fucking loads of heavies because it was constantly bothered. Can we used to like I used to have a personal one and I was like, we had like two, what's the two on the bus? And then we take like like it was pure, it was really nuts. Can like. But now it's like, can I just like, my, I've got my power that looks after us and that. But it's just not that I need looking after, but there is. You need because people, right? people, people read in the papers sometimes, can like some of the shit they're reading, they think, these are your arsehole, I'm not a dick, I'm not a rap in the bus. And it's like, what have I done to you? Uh, mud sticks, mm. but, so the, you know the press, yeah, people, I know that. that's only way they say, always through negative or whatever. So if you look mud sticks, so people will read what they believe, and they go, people's automatically go, I'm, I'm going to call him out when I see him. Yeah. But then, then you start to get a chip on your shoulder and think everybody's looking at you and he's, the paranoia kicks in or not. Yeah, so that's why if you have a baby in the pub or whatever, then you've got that, I don't give a fuck mentality. Yeah. Because I don't care if anybody's going to see it, so you're prepared. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Do you know what I mean? But I think nowadays, like, and, and like, even in Dundee, I used to go put my head up and like scared to go about and just waiting on the next thing happening. But now it's like, can I think like, but I've, I've no been on a close and just got, even in Glasgow, there's certain pubs I wouldn't go into and that, but now I'm like, if it's, somebody wants to speak to us, they speak to us, but I used to get scared. Mm -hmm. And I was like, a wee fucking exactly, boy, scared right. boy, yeah, but I was like, wait, because I didn't have day on that anymore, like, can it's like, now I'm just like, can I, I embrace it, can I wait that? So, can Vemby wants the photo? Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, when's the, so you're gigging now, you're, so, you're selling out arenas now, you're getting the album on tour. What's this, where's the, where's the next gig this weekend, is it? Um, Falkirk is this weekend, then we're going to London, then it's like a wee sort of UK thing, just as this is a sort of test of the band and stuff, mm -hmm. then there'll be bigger there'll be bigger dates at the, at the start of next year, right. this is just sort of like just right. breaking in, and then we'll be going to Asia and Russia and Europe and shit, just the same old what you do, that's what you do. So have you got a new band? Or is it... Got a new band, yeah. Like, it's sad after this, like, sessions. Are they sober? Yeah, they're not sober, yeah. They're not sober, right? Until after the show, yeah. But even then, because I had, I had, my, I had my, my, my brother and, and I got another couple of guys in, and, and us together, can be like, we were like, wow, it was a party. Even in rehearsals, it was like, let's get the beers first. Mm -hmm. It was like, so you can't really... I'm not sure I've been through so many band members like trying to get the right ones. But I think I Maybe think it's I, just you. Uh, Maybe it's just you. <laughs> no, I was like I'm just like that. It's just like fuck knows, but I think I've put the nail on the head, so it's we're some good together because it's no bit this new band is about uh, so see with the view, every record we sort of progressed a wee bit and harmonies playing and then just getting better with instruments, Ken, because we are sort of grew up together playing together. Aye, aye. So everything we progress together. So with the so we just every album you could hear the difference. It's like more harmonies or there's mere mere Whatever, you know what I mean? Mere strings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So with this with this new album, it was kind of just me doing it, and I, I do all the vocals on it. So that's normally normally the boys would do that, but now I sort of know what what I want it to sound like. So now it's like going with the new band. It's like you've got to do this, and that. So I had to get the right band members to be able to do it to pick the right 
Uh -huh. People that could sing the right bits, you know what I mean? So it's not really about the playing, it's about all these mental vocals, and it's like that trying to recreate the song and trying to. Uh -huh. So it's. Okay, it's kind is of, that a new Splinter album? Is it something different for you? If you would it's, produce? it's normally. So normally, like, with hey, with, if you've got a formula, it's not. I'm not sure what the formula is, but would would stick with a like a guitar solo with with, with say, I find a, a, a drum beat kind of and all this, and it wasn't about that. It was about writing the song and then adding what was needed to it. Do you get what I mean? And it was like strings, and I wrote other string parts from like this melaton thing, which is like an old. I was in recording in Paul Weller's studio in Blackburn in Surrey, and it was like this old like Mellotron, which was Paul McCartney's, and it's like it's like a tape right. thing. So I recorded all the strings on that, and then once I wrote all the harmony parts and stuff, I gave them to the the, the Cairn strings, and they they like this. I was recording it in Glasgow and Chem Chem 19, and they they done all the string parts and like padded it out and made it sound like because right. originally I wanted to sound like sort of like a. Uh, the Beatles sort of like went uh, Sergeant Pepper, but oh, that's the hardest thing in the world today because it's the greatest right. album ever. So, I mean, that's what I had in mind, but then it ended up becoming more poppy, which is kind of like, I'm a big, big fan of like Crowded House, Beautiful South, Squeeze and stuff, kind of that kind of thing. So, that was kind of what I was going for, kind of sort of like sort of serious, but kind of cheeky. Is that I mean? a personal album as well? Is it a bit more you, a bit more? Well, all the songs are about me. See, like, right. well, that's, well, that's, <laughs> that's slightly weird. Somebody, somebody wrote, um, it's because I had, I had done this interview in Glasgow recently where I was going, ah, I'm a narcissist, just joking, it was a joke, and everybody laughed, there was a big crowd of people, it was about 600 people, and I was going, I'm a narcissist, and everybody's laughing, so I went, oh, keep saying that, it keeps this working, I mean, I'm a narcissist, they're going, oh, oh, go for it, and I was like, oh, this is working, and then somebody went, ah, that fault was no bad, but he's a fucking, he's a narcissist, isn't he? And I was like, oh, well, I was I'm fucking joking there, okay? I mean, was like, but it is quite narcissistic, the record, it's, a, it's me singing about myself, so normally Kieran makes some songs, like, and now Pete's writing as well, so it's, and then you've got, there's, there's a mix, and Kieran will put in a bit of my song, and I'll put in a bit of his, and there's that whole thing, and it's, it's a band mentality, this is none of that, it's just me, and it's a bit problems I've had in the past be well, do you know what I mean, and it's, it's kind of, it's like, no thank you. But you've overcome <laughs> them as well. But yeah, I mean, as, yeah, again, it's still, it's one of these things, you didn't get ever, know if you've really over, yeah. overcome anything or was it there. You've never battling me in. You just, it's, it's hard to understand what the problem is in your right. mind. Because I everything don't is the mind. mindset, but I keep on, I say it in every, every show, mate, everything is the mindset. It's what you believe. Everything you battle up here, yeah, I just read that uh, six guys have committed suicide in the last week through have committed the army. Everything is, yeah. every, all these demons that we're battling, that's where I think all the drugs, all the drink, we're searching, mate, because we want to take these voices, we want to get them away, man. We want to feel at peace and at calm, but... We can't really do that because we don't know really know what our path is in life. But from, from talking for experience, when I stop talking about stuff, you start getting aware, you start getting clarity, and you start going, wait a minute, man, I'm starting to feel good. I've never felt like this. Is this what it really feels like? Because we, we tell that much lies that we're fine, we're fine. So you let like an onion, you wrap yourself in layers and layers. So when you stop all the madness or try to change or do new things, you have to unravel all that madness, then you start figuring out who the fuck you're again, which is a difficult thing to do. It's difficult, except you were an asshole in the past. Do you know what I mean? You put your hands up, it's difficult, but then you start getting used to it. You go, do you know what? I was a dick in the past. I know you are. Fine, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where's your biggest, where's your biggest following? Because you've talked about Russia or not, you know, do you have fans over there? Glasgow. Glasgow's our biggest following, yeah. Um, yeah. We've done Russia a couple of times, um, like Japan, we do well in Japan, but. Um, you're just our, our place, we do well, we do well, we do well, well every place, yeah, but um, I mean, America back in the day was, was the big end, like we got ASCAP awards and stuff, which is like this write, songwriting award, it was a big deal, Ken, and George Martin, Beatles producer, presented it to Pete and me and Kieran were writing the songs at the time, mm -hmm. and we, we were and we were in Morocco, I can't remember, we were someplace on a writing trip, Ken, a writing trip, Ken, but, uh, <laughs> trying to write, but uh, and then Pete was like, oh, by the way, I usually won an ASCAP award, but he's kind of accepted it, so I'm going to this big party to accept it, and George Martin, the Beatles producer, was there, and I was like, no way! I think we, we were in Mexico, actually, we were in Mexico on a, on a holiday, and uh, no, I, well, I can't mind, we were someplace, no, Pete was there, I can't mind, but, uh, but we were gutted, but, uh, but so we were taking off in America, and they got, got cancelled, we, we couldn't play there anymore, so we got banned for there for like six years, and then I toured, I toured with Matt Ronson for like three years, and then he, just me on my own, and then he, he got a letter from Quincy Jones, personally, to, to speak to the visa people and sort of does it and just oh, says, says, says I've changed, changed my ways and stuff like that. So. Fuck's sake, man, he's got some Paul Quincy, yeah. <laughs> So Mark Ronson phoned him and got, they got your visa yeah, sorted? something like that, I was like, I'm not sure, but there was... So he's banned for it, America for six years then? It was just, it was just visa issues there for like, so it, was just, it was just me and... Is that where you your madness in the past yeah. in jail and that? Yeah. Did you ever do a sentence? No. Nah, just all weekenders and fucking yeah. daft shit? Yeah. It won't happen again, though. You'll never see me in the fucking cells. Good, mate. I wish I could say the same for myself. <laughs> good, man. Good guy, now. Is, uh, when's, the, when's the singles and that getting released? Have you got any dates? Or? 
When's the single coming out? Uh, we've got the two singles out of the year, and then the next one we're about to do a video for it, so there'll be a date soon for it. Good. We're going. We're releasing all, every single on like <clears throat> on seven inch. We've already done two. Right. So we're, really, we're going to do like five singles and have a wee box. So other cuts, right. it's cool as any, and there's going to be a separate B side for everything. But you can only get them on vinyl, <clears throat> kind of B sides, and right. there's only going to be a few hundred on mid. And where can people buy all these? You can get them in the Sire Records in Dundee. It's the only shop that does it. Yeah. That's the only shop that does it. Mm -hmm. Get involved, people. The next tour, so I just tours felt up. We just saw what it looks. Just saw it and looks. Yeah, there's going to be some more announcements as well, but. You know, things you can't say now unless the agent tells you to go. Agents, agent, man. Agent here, that <laughs> Listen, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure for coming on, mate. And I think you're a, you're a great guy, man. I don't care what you've done, <laughs> and I think it's unbelievable that you've got your new solo album, out, man. And all the best for the way and passing your test, man. And like I say, man, for taking the time out, I really appreciate that, mate. Thanks I wish so you for the best for the future. So so before man. I go, I've got a shout out for we've got our homeless documentary coming out on second uh, of September. Uh, on my YouTube channel, so subscribe. Also, I've got check out Indio Paws, it's a, a friend James's business for dog grooming, dog walking. Also, thanks for Creative um, for putting the fly flyers and posters for the homeless documentary. So, Kyle, brother, thank you, and tune in. Subscribe to the channel and speak to you soon. Cheers, man.